Laugh rolled out across the docks. The laughter rolled out and tied the men together. Laughter rolled out in the grog shops, in the town square, in the streets. It rolled out on the ship during the long, cold night. For 20 years, it rolled out while the king made new decrees. It rolled out when the British captain came aboard the whaler and shouted, Stop laughing! Stop laughing! What are they laughing at? My men always laugh when they work together, Captain. Huh? But there's a strong bond between us. Now, there's more than a bond between you. There's rebellion in your brain. I'm here to see that it doesn't spread to other ports. By orders of the king, you and your merry men will remain in dock hereafter. But you can't do that, man. I can do that and more. Furthermore, one of your sailors has been seen demonstrating against the king's decrees. Do you call him? I have 40 sailors. You have one Negro sailor. Will you call him? What do you want with him? Call him before me. Very well. Attucks. Skipper? Captain Cox wants to see you. Oh. So, you're the one we see with the crowds and wherever there are agitators against the king. Tell me, what do they talk about that draws you to them? They talk about freeing themselves from the king, don't they? They talk about revolt. Yes, they talk about freedom. So you're not afraid to admit it. And uh, what do you do? I listen. I listen and look. I believe you do more than listen. One act and you'll be hanged. Remember that. We'll look for it. It's for you, Skipper. Keep your men in port, you hear that? I hear it, but we'll petition the governor against it. Every sailor in Boston will fight this blockade. And if the governor doesn't answer you? We'll take our case to the king, if necessary. And if the king doesn't answer, Skipper? Perhaps then we'll give our own answer. Captain. The knock-kneed man went out among the townspeople, listening, looking, searching. And the knock-kneed man heard the people saying, I say, Americans, tell the king to take his thieving troops out of our homes. I say, tell the king to take his troops out of our homes. I say no taxation without representation. I say no laws without our consent. I say the way to deal with the tyrants is to tear him out of your system. Tear him out. I say, give me liberty or give me death. Give me liberty or give me death. I say colonists black and white are born free. Are not slaves to a king. The knock-kneed man said nothing. The knock-kneed man explored the hearts of the colonists. In the house of the skipper, the sailors waited, watched the troops march down the streets, watched the troops march. Look at them come, skipper. How many more will they send? Uh, they'll keep sending them until we stop them. Till they've beaten us out of our homes. Why do you keep us waiting here? Uh, to keep you off the gallows. <laughs> because there's nothing else to do but wait. Till the governor answers us. And why doesn't Addicts wait with us? Addicts? Well, he's an odd one, he is. In New York last week. In Jamestown. In New Jersey. Sizing things up, he says. Like he's searching for something. Always searching. He can stop his search now, Skipper. The king's men have found us again. Well, open the door. We've done nothing wrong. Open the door, mate. Aye, sir. Well, Skipper, what are your men plotting now? What do you want with us? Why can't you let us alone? It's you who sent for me, Skipper. We sent for you? Uh, you petitioned the governor to free your ship. Oh, of course. My men are at the door. Obey my orders. Uh, will you stand, Skipper, and receive your answer? Of course. But what is it? Uh, that's your answer. Now you know what the governor thinks of you and your petitions. Of you and your rebel sailors. Rabble like you roam around the streets yelling freedom this, freedom that. Tonight, keep your rats in their holes. Or there'll be a massacre in Boston. Now, do you want to take your petition higher to the king? No, no. Now, Captain, this time we'll bypass the king. 
The people were out in the cold Boston night. Soldiers slapped at the crowd with swords. In the night, the knock-kneed man knocked on the door of the skipper's room. Who is it? It's Alex. Skipper, it's Alex. Oh, where you been, Alex? Skipper. Wait, wait. Give him air. Let him rest. Now, speak up, Alex. I've been along the coast. I've been in shops and on the docks. I've been out in the square with the crowd. What are they doing? They're trying to find a way to be their own masters. Mm. With sticks and stones against rifles, it's suicide. There's no way to beat off the soldiers. I know a way. Yes? Yes, Alex? Well, I like the look in your eyes. Sit here. Pour him a nip of rum, mate. All right, sir. Now, Alex. You know a way? Yes, Skipper. It's this way. In New York, I saw the townspeople plant a tree, a dead tree, a flagpole. But they called it that liberty tree. It had flags on top of it that said liberty, freedom. Yes, yes, go on. They planted it every day. And every day the, the king's men would cut it down. But they kept planting it. And why plant it? Why? So the idea of liberty would grow strong among the people. Is that all you've gotten out of your trips? Out there in the streets, our people are being beaten for speaking their minds. Here you sit and talk of planting trees. You talk of trees and we got a rope around our necks. Uh, wait, men, wait. Let Alex finish. You expect us to go out into the square and plant a tree? Yes. But a different kind of tree. One no army can cut down. What are you talking about? I'm telling you. Once when I was a slave, I used to dream of freedom at night. But in the morning, I would wake up still a slave. So one day, I dreamed I could give my life for freedom. And when I woke up, I was unafraid. And nothing stood my way. Nothing could stop me from helping others win freedom. I could see that if everyone had freedom, no one would need to steal it from another man. Only then would we all be safe. That is why I say let's plant a liberty tree here in Boston. Even if, even if it costs us our lives. And our liberty tree has got to be ourselves. We've got to drive the soldiers from the square. Oh, you're out of your head. If we attack the troops, they'll shoot us down like rats. Skipper? We can't attack alone. We won't be alone. The people in the square will follow. That's oh, foolish. Skipper, you say nothing. You're in command here. Yeah, what about, what about it, Skipper? It, I'm thinking. I'm thinking there's sense in what Attic says, only... What? Yes, to strike a blow at the soldiers would let the people know their own strength. Only... Yes? We're like the rats who wanted to put the bell on the cat. That bell would awaken everyone in Boston, never every man in the colonies. But who'll lead? It'll be sure death. You, mate? Well, me? You, Skipper. Joe? Skipper, I don't... Tom? Uh, don't ask anyone, Skipper. Let's draw straws for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's not a job for luck or chance. The man who leads can't waver. He's got to know why he does it and that he'll die doing it. How can we be sure of him? I say let him who wants most to be free speak up and strike the first blow. Skipper, how many men will follow me? Ten sailors followed the man with the knocked knees out towards the Boston Square. Two hundred townspeople followed the sailors while the king in London drove to a banquet. In Boston, the captain saw the crowd and the man with the knocked knees and warned the guard. Guard, guard, he's coming. Call the platoons together. They're ready, sir. Where is he? There, leading the crowd, coming this way. What shall we do, sir? I'll warn them. I'll warn them first. Go back to your homes or be shot. He just keeps coming toward us, sir. He's waiting on the others. Go back or I'll order the men to fire. He still comes, sir. Look, he's taking a gun from a guard. For the last time, Attix, in the name of his majesty, your lord and master, Don't I come up. and tell your king we are all masters. Tell him. Fire! 
He heard a cock crow twice. He heard bloodhounds bark. He heard sailors laughing. And then he saw the people take the square. The man with the knocked knees had struck the first blow. And news about the Boston Massacre hit the colonies like lightning and hit the key on old Ben Franklin's kite. Patrick Henry's words burned the ears of the king. George Washington left his plantation life. In Boston, the people took the body of a black man with knocked knees and the bodies of white men and planted them like seeds in the same grave. In Monticello, Jefferson dreamed of a declaration of independence. In Boston, Crispus Attucks and his fellows had already declared it. In the night, a new snow fell on the ground where he had planted his living tree. just heard the story of Crispus Attucks, as presented by Destination Freedom, a special radio series dramatizing the great democratic heritage of the Negro people. Destination Freedom is brought to you by WMAQ's Department of Public Affairs and Education and the Chicago Defender newspaper. Next week, we bring you the story of Harriet Tubman, one of the famed figures of the Underground Railroad. Destination Freedom is written by Richard Durham, and the production is under the direction of Homer Heck. The role of Crispus Attucks was played by Fred Pinkard, the narrator by Arthur McCoo, the captain by Donald Gallagher, the skipper by Jess Pugh, Abigail by Janice Kingslow, the Quaker by Arthur Peterson, the mate by Maurice Copeland, the guard by Charles Mountain, the editor by Marvin Peisner, and the singer was Greg Pascoe. The special music was composed by Richard Shores and played by Elwin Owen and Bobby Christian. And this is Hugh Downs inviting you to be with us again next week for the story of Harriet Tubman on Destination Freedom. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.